Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK, and today we're just doing a bit of an updated refresher video on how to set up QUTS Hero. Uh, we change a few things throughout the install process, so just to update the previous video we did, um, this one's going to be a lot more accurate uh, for um, 2021 and onwards. Okay, so the first screen we're going to be met with now is an option to switch between um, QTS, which is the operating system not currently installed. We can see at the top there that it says QTS Heroes installed. So you get to choose now if you want to stay with QUTS Hero or switch to QTS. Uh, we've done another video on the process of switching between OSs, so please uh, go have a look at that one if you want to see what that involves. It really is just a single click and then wait for it to do, do its thing. Um, but if your NAS is online, you will see these two options. If you've got it directly connected to a laptop, you won't see the option about switching. Um, it will just be on the OS it is. It needs to be online to download the other OS. Um, so we're going to go straight ahead and click uh, Start Smart Installation. So now it's going to do a firmware check. Um, if you're already on the latest version, the option you'll see is Skip, which is what we are. Um, so we're just going to click Skip. Uh, now you get to pick a name for the NAS. So I'm just going to call it the model name so I know which one it is. Um, then you have to type in a password. There is no default passwords here, so you just type in a strong password. There we go. Click Next. You get to choose if you want it to be connected to an NTP server, which is a time server on the internet, to make sure the time is as accurate as possible on the NAS. Uh, this is quite important depending on uh, what type of services you're running, say joining to Active Directory, using it for CCTV recording. Um, so it's always good to leave it on the default option here. You can, of course, change the NTP server to any uh, that you prefer. And click Next. Uh, you can choose whether you want a static IP address or whether you want to go Obtain. For my purposes here, I'll go to Obtain. But if you are setting up any services on your QNAP, um, where you have to port forward through a firewall, perhaps something like that, um, static IP address is always going to be the best option uh, so that your port forwarding rules never change. And now you get to choose which platform you're using. Um, I generally just untick the uh, bottom two options here. Um, Macs use uh, Windows for the most part, so the SMB protocol these days, uh, so absolutely no problem doing it. Some services on a Mac may still require AFP, um, or if you're running an older version of Mac OS, you may still need AFP. But this decision can be changed later as well. Um, it's very easy to do that in the settings. Um, so now I'm going to click Next just summarizing your changes and you can scroll through these and see all the different options and then just click apply it will erase any data on the drives by doing this so be sure that this is okay we can click initialize um, so this is going to go off and configure all those settings that we've just chosen and it'll take five or six minutes um, once it's finished uh, you'll be met with a screen that says uh, go to NAS management and uh, we'll come back to you then Okay, and there we can see that we've got the congratulations and the option to go to the NAS management. So if we click that, if you had changed the IP address of the NAS at this point, it would change to that IP address up there. And we just have to log in with the default username of admin and whatever password you created in that initial setup. And then it's going to log us into the NAS interface for the first time. We're going to get quite a few pop-ups, things to agree to, and choices of things to do. Um, so we'll go through those one by one just so you can see all the different options. Um, so here, welcome to storage and snapshots. That's fine. There's a little wizard here if you want to see it. I'm going to close that. A data collection agreement that you can agree to or not. There we go. And we've got the storage and snapshots. So inside the storage and snapshots, you've got a couple of options to do. So if I go to the storage uh, slash snapshots menu on the left hand side, um, I'm going to create a new storage pool. So with the new storage pool, I'm going to click Next. You get to choose whether it's a shared folder or a LUN, which would be for iSCSI or Fiber Channel. So I'm going to select all the disks. So in this unit here, I've got the four disks. So if I tick all of those, you get to choose which RAID type. I'm going to leave it on RAID 5. That's just fine for me. Click Next. Um, you get some extra options here, things like optimizing performance. We won't do that for now just because it takes a couple of minutes to do, and I want this video to sort of not run forever. Um, you've got some extra options down here for over-provisioning the pool. Um, these really are choices that you can make for yourself. Um, there's a little information next to each of them, so you can choose to pick them if you need them. Um, the alert threshold, um, as I'm going to be using a thick provision volume, I'm going to disable that here, otherwise um, I will probably hit the alert threshold fairly quickly. 
Um, so we'll take that one off and I'm going to click next and then I'm going to click create. Just confirming that everything on those disks will be erased, click OK. Um, so this is going to go create the RAID now. Um, as I say, I chose RAID 5 with the four disks. Um, so that's going to create it. And then the next step after you've got a storage pool um, is to effectively create uh, volumes within it. So with QUTS Hero, um, each shared folder is like a volume directly within the storage pool. Um, you could have uh, lots of shared folders, or you could have some shared folders, some iSCSI LUNs or fiber channel LUNs. Um, there's a lot of different options that you can do. Um, really, this customization and this step is really down to uh, your use case and your needs uh, for what you need to do next. Uh, so we'll just wait for this and we'll click Create New Shared Folder. We'll click Start. And now we need to create the shared folder name. So the shared folder name, I think it's going to be red because it's not finished creating just yet. So we might have to wait a second to do this. Oh, there we go. It's still creating 75%. So just got to wait till that finishes and then we'll be able to do the next step. Okay, so we should be good to go now. There we go. It says ready. So now what we can do is we can create our own shared folder. So if I go new shared folder, click on start. Um, it's not red this time. So here what we've got, we can pick a folder name. So I could say call it Craig. Um, and I can choose thick or thin provisioning. So thin provisioning is just about provisioning um, a sort of a virtual total capacity. We can see with this one with an all SSD array, um, I've got less than four terabytes total. So 3.88 terabytes um, available, but you can thin provision a volume that was say 20 terabytes and just add more storage as you need it in the free drive base. Uh, with thick provisioning, it's going to block it off straight away. So provision it out immediately. Uh, so if I was to say change this to terabytes and say one terabyte for the uh, shared folder called Craig, uh, you can set that up there. There's a few different options here. I'm going to leave everything else default. I'm going to click next. You can choose whether you want uh, compression and data dedupe enabled. So you can take those if you need to. And if you've got an SSD cache, you can enable that. And down here we have the performance profile. So we would generally recommend you pick uh, the profile that most matches the use case. Um, so we've got a few examples listed there. For example, with VMware, you've got the 32K option. Um, if you're using it with databases like Exchange Mailbox stores, things like that, you can set it at the smaller size. Um, I'm just going to leave it at the 128K for this one. I'm going to click Next. Choose your permissions. Who's allowed access? As we've only got one user so far, the admin user, that's the only one listed. Click Next. And then we've got some extra options, whether you want things like Windows previous versions to work. That's with snapshotting. We've got another video on the channel about that. Um, and there's also that network recycle bin and whether you want to use it as a time machine folder. I'm just going to leave it as the default options and click Next and Finish. A little message here letting you know you can use the shared folders as multimedia content folders. Um, I'm going to say don't show this again and click OK. So that's going to now create the shared folder called Craig at one terabyte in size. And it's going to immediately take that one terabyte uh, straight from the storage pool so that that's not available for any other volume to use. It's locked to the Craig volume. And you can see the different icons we've got. So a thin provision folder uh, will be listed with an icon looking like this, a bit more gray. And then the thick provision one is a bit more solid looking with a white outline. Um, but there that's created. There's my one terabyte share that I can now use. So we're pretty much done here in storage and snapshots uh, for the setup we've got here. So we can close that. Just a message about the um, help center. So if you do ever have an issue with your QNAP NAS, um, this is one of the best places to create a support ticket from because um, it will submit details about your device directly with the ticket. So things like the serial number, uh, logs if they're relevant, things like that. So you can click on the help desk option here and create a, a support ticket directly in here. Um, it's a very useful option, so um, you don't miss any information when you get in touch with tech support because we include all the basic information. Um, so we'll close that. Um, just to, to let you know that there are licenses available if you need to buy anything extra, you've got those as an option as well. Um, and it's just the warning there that was hidden behind everything else saying no volumes or storage pools, but we've already sorted that out by creating those. Um, so let's pop this one back. So here we've got an update is available in the App Center message as well. So once it's fully installed and ready to go, uh, this will allow you to go to the App Center and update anything that needs updating. So we can see a few bits of the software uh, do require some updates. So you can update them individually. 
or you can click update all. If you do update them individually, there is options that you can see. So if you click on the one, you get to see the change log. So this would show you um, all the changes and improvements since the last version. Um, if you're just happy to upgrade all of them, you can just click all and it will just do it without showing you any change logs. Um, so it will go download them all, apply those updates, and then you'll be ready to go. Um, if anybody has any questions about the setup for their particular NAS, uh, do put it in the comments section below. Um, please let me know which NAS you have, um, the sort of drive and uh, expansion card configuration you have, and I'll try and give you the best tips um, for the use case that you've got as to what would be the best way to set it up. Um, okay, so hopefully you found that useful. Um, very easy setup, very um, that simple setup on the uh, on the main setup there. Um, so it's very easy to just go through. Um, you can really just click next, 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 and it will pick most things for you. The only thing you really have to type um, is the password that you want to set, um, and it will still be set up in a pretty decent way. Uh, but as I say, if you if you do have a special use case, use case, um, there are some different options that you can select along the way. All right, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.